Did she have any luck? When I left, she had everyone working on miniaturizing the insulation cloaking from our containment unit. I'm not sure how far they got. These controls are running some sort of automated procedure. Hmm. The system is no longer reachable over the network. Cut off by the biomass, no doubt. It must be an old test. Abandoned during the outbreak and resume now that we've restored power. This transparent aluminum is reinforced. Unfortunately, that's still not enough to withstand concerted biomass growth. I assume these microscopes were used to observe the biomass? I believe so, yes. Development of the biomass containment technology required research at the macro, micro, and even nanoscopic scales. With these microscopes, the researchers would have been able to observe the effect of their containment technology in real time. With a more manageable sample size, of course. It must have been a heavy responsibility to work so closely with live biomass samples. It was not without its risks. So, would you say it was more or less risky than intentionally infecting your own FTL drive? If you have any less precarious solutions, Captain, the more yes. Is this a control interface? That's right. For the robotic arm in the adjoining chamber. Use the holographic controls to adjust each part of the articulation. Is this some type of emitter? Hmm. It looks to be a functional prototype. I knew she... They were close, but I, I didn't know they had moved into practical testing. The basic concept was to surround the biomass with a cloak of electromagnetic insulation, preventing energy from reaching it. Kind of like using a blanket to smother a flame. Indeed. The idea was to build these cloak emitters as a uh, reactive defense against the biomass. To contain it. I can see a wide range of applications. It's just all at best, not a solution. I wish you could have seen that. I wonder if they moved this prototype into production. Even if they did, it clearly wasn't enough to stop an outbreak. This is why we need a cure. Such versatile technology.
Jack, the biomass of the exit of the test lab will make it difficult to proceed. It's possible the robotic arms may be of use. Biomass at the exit neutralized. It's possible I failed to foresee some of the clockimeter's eventual implications. Sounds like your research director was on the right track. Nora. She never gave up. I could hardly ever pull her away from her work. Dr. Harlan, if I may interject. The local data I see implies that the director's efforts to develop clock emitters proceeded beyond prototyping. Portable versions were installed in some of the X3 medtech shells. Several of these shells appear to have been left behind in the medical wing. I believe it may be possible to fit Jack with a similar device, a portable cloak emitter. What is involved? I'll need you to retrieve the data from one of the medtech shells here. With that, I should be able to reconstruct the portable cloak emitter's design. Copy that. I'll see what I can find. I'll need to manually open this door. I assume it was shut down as another precaution? Most likely. If the medtech shells have data we can use to reconstruct a portable cloak emitter, it will be worth the risk. I'm entering the medical lab. Doctor, perhaps you should step away for a moment. I'm sure there's still plenty of output data to parse before we're ready to initiate the experiment. She's here, isn't she? Juno? More than likely, yes. Hmm, the research director. I can handle it, Juno. Are you certain? I'm not looking away. This device indeed appears to be a portable cloak emitter. Juno, I believe your conjecture was correct. Naturally. If you scan the shell's data port, I believe I can create a similar device for you. Identified. Unfortunately, the data contained in this shell is only partial. Jack, to complete the reconstruction, I need you to scan additional units. Understood. I found another casualty. This researcher seems to have been helping the other one. Dr. Adriana Lay. She was too young. Oh, God. 
a researcher, one of our anesthesiologists. It's an impossible task, alleviating the pain of an infection, especially in later stages. Yeah, I, I, I can imagine. Who was this person? Dr. Franklin Teller, a fellow geneticist. You knew him? And I knew all of them. I recovered her research. It also seems she received a message from Dr. McKenna with all of his access codes attached. Would you like me to play it? Not right now. Very well. I'll store the message for playback later. If any of Dr. McKenna's codes prove useful, I'll add them to your own computer. Thank you. A keypad for the duct. Juno. Could one of Dr. McKenna's codes work here? I believe so, yes. Try 2525. Access to the utility ducts granted. primary examination room, where prototype cures were administered to volunteers. These medical beds were used for diagnostic scans? And to monitor potential treatments. Many of my peers focused on post-diagnosis options. What sort of options? Pain management, transmission reduction. Though most patients with terminal diagnosis volunteered for cure research. Wait, wait. There are diagnoses that aren't terminal. If the infection is limited to the extremities and has not yet penetrated the epidermis, amputation has a roughly 40% success rate. In emergencies, the integrated cutter equipped by several models of the X3 shell, including Jack's, can... No. That's enough. Forget I asked. This log indicates a multitude of visitors. Some were children. Yes. Many of the station's personnel had families. Most of their children were suitably behaved. Some were not. Still, I hope they reached safety. moderate store of data, but much of it could prove useful in developing a cure. Good find, Jack. Moving through the vents now. Tell me something, Doctor. How long does it take? What? For the infection to run its course. Once it becomes fully active, usually somewhere between three to five days. But most victims opt to expedite their end. Right.
So, uh, how does the infection work? Once it becomes active, I mean... The biomass drains energy directly from your cells. Your body is in the throes of widespread cellular decay. Major organ failure follows 12 to 18 hours later. But at least by then you are not in as much pain, since the infection has likely started feeding on the electrical signals traveling through your nervous system. By day four you... All right, I get the picture. Liv, that's not going to happen to you. Yeah. Whatever it takes, we'll find a solution. I know, Jack. Excellent. That shell contained more data regarding the portable emitters. We'll need a good bit more to reconstruct the design, though. still need more data. Interesting. Doctor, this shell has a log conversation regarding the director and your research. Go ahead, Juno. Beginning playback. All right, Unit 5, back to the lab. The director wants to run those simulations again. Very. For what purpose? I'm not sure. Dr. Harlan's ideas were intriguing, to say the least, but, uh, well, I suppose the director knows best. Go ahead and prep the simulations. I'll join you shortly. Acknowledge, Dr. McKenna. Huh. So the director eventually explored your theories after all? I... didn't expect she would continue it after I left. But without the biomass's base genetic material, it would have been as much of a dead end as containment. I just... couldn't convince her. I found another arm equipped with a cloak emitter, a backup safety measure. More than likely, but that's the problem. The biomass can't be contained. No matter how many redundancies you put in place. Construction of the personal cloak emitter is nearly complete. One more scan should be sufficient. Patient chart reveals catastrophic cellular breakdown. Most likely an internal infection that passed through the tissue. Does that happen in every case? Eventually, but the host is usually deceased by then. Oh, that's a relief.
I found another casualty of the biomass. It appears he was trying to assist right up until the end. A further casualty of the biomass. Dr. Jordan Deci. She specialized in pain management therapy for the infected. Data collection complete. Finalizing tool reconstruction. Reconstruction complete. Please visit a fabricator to install your new cloak emitter. Thank <laughs> you. 